Chord Change is a Max for Live device for exploring chord progressions in Ableton Live. It expands your short loop to a longer progression that you can change in real time to hear the results. As a starting point, you need to have one or more MIDI clips in the arrangement view. These are your source clips. The material chord change will transpose to create chord progressions. You can use up to 8 clips, which can have different loop lengths. In this example I have one clip containing chords, an arpeggio and a bass line. The clips should be composed in the same key and placed within the same loop in the arrangement view. Make sure that scale mode is enabled. In Live 12 also check that the global scale corresponds to the key of your source material. The device will use the notes that are within the clip loop. So make sure that the clip loop is set around the notes that you want to use. For example, if you have a long sequence of notes inside the clip, set the clip loop to the notes that you want to include. If you have in mind a source of two bars like this, but the loop inside the clip is longer, make sure to set the clip loop to correspond to the loop length you have in mind, in this case two bars. To get the best control of what notes will be included, you can consolidate all the clips in the loop by selecting them and selecting Consolidate. And finally make sure they are all set to loop. To open chord change, drag the device to a new track. If scale mode is enabled and the global scale in Live 12 is set to the right key, Chord change should automatically detect your source key when you add the device. If the device shows the wrong key, manually select the correct one from the menu. The easiest way to get started from here is to click Sync. When you click Sync, the device will automatically find the first segment of clips in the arrangement view, set them as source clips and then set a 4 bar loop to the right of those clips. You now have a progression based on your source material. At this point, the progression is an exact representation of the source material, but longer. From here, you can create your progression by dragging the line up or down in the progression graph. You can now hit play in live and hear the results as you make edits. When you edit the progression, the only thing that changes is the progression clips. The source stays the same. It just looks like it's changing, but this is just the results of Live's visual representation of the notes. Most of the time you probably want to use the quick option we just walked through. However, there are times when you may prefer to use manual settings. For example, if you have a few different possible segments of source material, like different versions, you will want to use the more manual procedure to define the source. Let's say you want to use this segment of clips as source. They are not the first clips, so the device will not select them automatically if you click Sync. Instead, you need to set the loop and click Set from Loop to define the source. Set the live loop around the source material and click Set from Loop in the Source panel. This sets the source span according to your current arrangement view loop. The source material is now defined and you should see the clips in the source panel. Now set the live loop to where you want to place the progression on the timeline. You can set it to, for example, 4 bars. To set the progression span, click set from loop in the progression panel. This sets your progression span from the current arrangement view loop. The buttons that are next to the set from loop buttons display the current value for the source and progression spans. The source is currently bar 7 to 9, so it says 7 to 9. If you click this button, it takes you to that span. And the same thing with progression. So you can click these to quickly navigate to either the current source or the current progression to listen to it. If I make any changes to the source material, like editing some notes or even adding or deleting some tracks, 
use the reload button to apply the changes to the progression. For example, if I change a note here and add another track, I can click reload and those changes will be reflected in the current progression. When sync is active, any edits that you make in the progression will be mirrored in the arrangement view. Unchecking sync disables the connection between the device and the progression clips on the arrangement view. To indicate what the current source and progression clips are, the clips have labels. These labels are removed when you unsync the progression. So if you want to get rid of the labels when you have a progression that you are happy with, you can disable sync to remove it. In case you don't have the device in the set and you want to remove labels like this, simply select all the clips, click rename, hit delete and enter to clear all the clip labels. In Live 11, the view you will use is your normal arrangement view. To see the notes as good as possible, a tip is to make the tracks bigger. If you have Live 12, it's also possible to see one or more clips in detail at the same time as you see the device. To get to this view, make sure that the clip view as well as the device view is toggled on. Select the clip or clips you want to use using command or control in case of selecting more than one. Then while holding command and control also select the empty area of the device track. And finally click the device track name. Each track that you have in progression has a transpose mode setting. Select a track to see or edit the track's transpose setting. The default is parallel. This setting moves notes up or down in scale steps. Parallel minimum movement is the same as parallel, but the device will find the closest octave to the other segments in the progression. Voice lead will move the notes in each segment individually by octaves to find a close voicing for the progression. Fixed means that notes aren't moved at all and can be used to make a melody stay the same over the progression. You can use it to try the option of having some of your material play the same thing over the progression, like the bass or a melody. The Keep Melody option is only relevant for the voice lead setting. You may use this option if your notes are a mix of chords and melodic notes. The setting will apply voice leading to notes that are stacked like chords, while applying a parallel transposition to any other notes. So in an example like this, we may want to keep the bass note here to move parallel while creating a narrower voicing for the chords. Let's now look at the source and progression key settings. Source key should always be the same as the key of your sourced material. So if you made it in B minor, make sure the source key is set to B minor. If all your source clips have scale mode on and the key is the same for all your clips, the device should pick up the source key automatically. Progression key is by default set to the same key as the source, but can be changed to change the root or mode of the progression. All scales available in Ableton are included in the device. However, many of these scales don't function as traditional keys, so chord generation results will vary depending on your choice. Seven note scales like major and minor and the different modes work best for creating chords since they naturally form chords out of triad shapes, while scales like pentatonic have limited notes for chord construction, but all scales are still included for experimental purposes. 
By default, the progression key is linked with the source key. If you change the key of the progression, the link will break. When you include non-triad chord notes in your source material, moving that shape up and down the scale can sometimes create results that sound a bit unexpected. NoteFix moves some notes to more safe options, like a triad note. There is no right or wrong here, it's just an option that you can consider and then choose what you like the best. The NoteFix is global to all tracks in a progression. NoteFix applies only to melodic notes not to notes that appear as a chord. The default length of the progression is 16 beats, meaning 4 bars in 4-4 four four signature. To change the progression length, you can select and change the length of individual segments insert segments after or before a selected segment, as well as delete a selected segment. You can also use duplicate to make the progression twice as long. The maximum progression length is 64 beats, meaning 16 bars in 4-4 time signature. To make edits in the progression, you click and drag the segment you need to change. To change segments at a different resolution, Select how many beats to edit at the time. The default segment type is called scale degree. It means that notes are transposed a number of steps up or down in the scale. Additionally, the chord change device has the ability to insert passing chords. Passing chords are temporary harmonies that connect between your main scale based chords. Unlike scale degree segments that stay within your chosen scale, passing chords often introduce notes from outside the scale. To insert a passing chord, select the segment and select passing chord. Then select what type of passing chord you want to use. The passing chord is not edited by dragging the progression graph like a normal segment. Instead, it's contextual to the chords next to it and there is a menu where you can make your selection. Two passing chords cannot be inserted next to each other. When you set a passing chord next to an existing passing segment, it will be changed back to normal scale degree. When setting the last chord in the progression to a passing chord, it will be a passing chord to the first chord in the progression. The snapshots feature lets you save and instantly recall different chord progressions while you're working so that you can compare different progressions and build up a collection of variations without losing your work. To save your current progression, click the plus icon. This captures everything in your current setup. You can have multiple snapshots saved at once so you can experiment and get back to previous versions. Click the play button of any snapshot to instantly recall the progression. If you want to update an existing snapshot with your current changes, just click the plus icon again to overwrite it. And if you no longer need a snapshot, click the X to delete it. To store different progressions that you create, you can of course simply copy the clips over to the side on the timeline, or you can set the loop to a new span and click set from loop on the progression panel. Yet another option is to select the time span and use live's consolidate time to new scene. This gives you a copy to a new scene in the session view.